Our top story this morning, it's shop and drop for retailer Tesco as sales fall in all of its major markets. Revenues in Europe fell 4% in Q3 with its home market, the UK, seeing a 1.5% decline. The numbers raise new questions, of course, over Chief Executive Phil Clark's two-year recovery strategy. So how does Tesco turn around its ailing business? We're joined by Jessica Ground, UK fund manager at Schroeder's. Uh, morning to you, Jessica. Um, you know, despite managing down expectations and, or resetting expectations, these are still pretty bad. Um, what does it say to you about Tesco and what does it say to you about our sector? I think um, it's, it remains very tough for, set, for Tesco. And I think, you know, their sales have been very poor, but we've seen the discounters be very strong. And you're now looking at Aldi and Little with 7% share of the market. They were nowhere a few years ago. I think the very interesting thing that's going to be is, is will Tesco's margins, which are at 5%, which are still very high, um, going to come under attack? We saw Asda announce price drops yesterday, and I'm quite concerned that we could see in the short term an outbreak of a price war in the UK, which is going to be tough for everyone. Do you blame management? Has management been too slow? Um, they've done some very good things, like finally grip it, grapping the US and shutting that down. But I think undoubtedly the scale of the problems are quite large at Tesco's um, and this current management team still has a lot to do. Schroders don't like the food retailers anyway to invest in, right? I, I, I personally am quite worried about the structural impact of online trading. As one of the few female fund managers in the city, I know that if I possibly can avoid going into supermarket, I will. And I'm just concerned about what that leaves the shape of their property portfolios with stranded assets. How do you position in financial services ahead of these expected multi-million euro rigging fines? I think a lot of the bad news on LIBOR has been expected. It's been so um, well signalled. But I think as a whole, the litigation risk in financial services um, from things like selling mortgage-backed securities in the U.S. remain very high. And it is very difficult, even when, after you've spoken to lawyers, to, to know where they um, end up. So I think it's about an ongoing multi-year headwind for the sector. Do you like the sector? Do you like financial services? I do. I actually think they're one of the cheaper sectors, um, and they are very geared if into an uptick in the economy. But you do have to expect these kind of nasty headlines occasionally when you open up the newspapers. Autumn statement in the UK tomorrow. Um, we've had some great manufacturing PMI numbers, services PMIs are out later. How do you best position as an investor in the UK uh, 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 in anticipation of what we might get from Osborne? I think Osborne's got a bit of manoeuvrability, but not a huge amount. I think um, he'll you know, do something on energy bills, but overall he's going to want to be talking about the recovery and, and things being on track. So I, I think, you know, there might be a bit of relief for some utility companies, but um, as a whole, I don't think it's going to be about a dramatic change of the autumn statement. OK, thanks, Jessica. Other business news this morning. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe readies a $182 billion economic sting, stimulus package to be unveiled this week. It's his latest bid to pull the economy out of deflation, and the new measures won't require the government to sell more debt. British insurers, including Prudential, Aviva, Legal and General and Standard Life, plan to invest £25 billion in UK transport and energy projects over the next five years. Britain's finance ministry says it aims to oversee £375 billion of major infrastructure investment over the next 20. It also plans to sell its stake in the Eurostar cross-channel rail link by 2020. Portugal begins one of its last reviews of its finances by the troika of the ECB, IMF and European Commission. The nation's benchmark index has taken a battery in recent years, but things may now be looking up, as Angelina Nong reports. Portugal's economy started growing Q2 after 10 quarters of contraction. Stocks have rebounded 47% since the low hit in June 2012, and the PSI 20 is still 52% from its peak in 2007. The low base and improving prospects have got analysts talking. Starmine shows they're expecting corporate earnings in Portugal to grow significantly next year as sales growth improves. Portugal sitting pretty at 5.6% versus Germany and France. Bear in mind, though, that Portuguese shares are much more volatile than those in developed Europe. So if you're investing, make sure you can exit your positions quickly. 
Right, top world news stories on Reuters this morning. The Thai military says it's ruled out a coup as it believes tension is easing after days of violent anti-government protests. Even so, today, hundreds of protesters stormed the Thai National Police headquarters. The armed forces which have staged or attempted 18 coups in the past 80 years have kept their distance from the latest turmoil. Three stadiums hosting matches at next year's Football World Cup finals will not be ready by FIFA's end-of-year deadline. They include the stadium in Sao Paulo, where two workers were killed by a falling crane. Brazil is using 12 stadiums for the finals and insists they'll be ready for the tournament. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un says uh, is said to have sacked a powerful uncle who was key in his rise to power. South Korean lawmakers say they have evidence San Jong-thek was sacked as vice chairman of the National Defence Commission and other posts. The move could help Kim to consolidate his power base with younger aides. Uh, that is it for this morning. I'll leave you with our pick of the day. Detroit keeps its spirits up. On Tuesday, a federal judge ruled the city will be eligible for the biggest bankruptcy in U.S. municipal history, allowing it to negotiate with its creditors in restructuring its debts. I'm Axel Threlfall. This is Reuters.